Hey, welcome back. It's been a little while since I talked about the survival game I'm making, the um, multiplayer survival game I'm making using the com.unity.transport, and I wanted to give you all an update today on what's going on. Now, I'd like to preface the fact that um, during the last month and this month, I've been working mostly on uh, board games, so Ludo and Chess, and that was to try out some multiplayer mechanics with both packages, so the transport package and also the ML API. Now that it is completed, I can move on to making something more real-time and more complex, uh, which is what I'm doing for this survival game, but also with another game that I will announce very, very shortly. So without further ado, let me boot up my screen here. You can have a look at what changed. Uh, it's the same screen as before. I had the server client, server client, yep. I can boot up the game and the map has changed. I have this guy. This guy is floating because there's an invisible collider beneath him right now. Um, I'm using a model just so I could actually feel how big a, <laughs> a humanoid character would be. There's a small offset. I do have a third person character controller and also a camera now. So that has been done. I'm quite happy with it for the moment at least. And yeah, so the map has changed. It's actually just a flat plane with vertex color on it. There's nothing and it's not, it doesn't look good. <laughs> and it's going to be changed. Like I'm trying out things and definitely the way I took for this approach to make Terran is not going to be sustainable in the future. So instead, I want to be creating my own technology in which I'll create my Terran within the editor and um, extract it to a height map. I now have a building system. So if I press on four, I have a building system in which I can place objects around. Um, I also have the inventory as before. This is the other people inventory. I have my own inventory that we already saw, right? And over here, I have the other person inventory, which I can interact with. Same thing as before. This is all network and it works quite well. Now, if I am to introduce a third party in here, so another client, I can enter the world. And then at this point, I can, well, here is the player. <laughs> it's a cube in this, this person view, but it's still there. Um, if I am to interact with this inventory, you're going to see that I took this and I can put that in my inventory that we already saw in the past. So the big update is the fact that now I have a combat system which have uh, HP and also a mana. This is randomized, the mana is randomized. Everybody has 10 HP for the moment. It's just to try out things. And here you'll see those sphere, those red spheres, and I'll, I'll show it on the client because there's less information. These red sphere around here are actually fire. And if I walk on top of it, Collision is detected and I lose HP through a pulse mechanic. So every X second, I'm going to be hit by this fire, for example. I can't really die this far, but I mean, the mechanic is there. And I really want to dive into why there isn't anything else than that. The reason there isn't anything uh, more than what I see, uh, I show you right here, is the fact that I rewrote the code so, so many times. Um, initially, I wanted to have an approach in which only the server would be aware who has the colliding entities. And then I, the more I was thinking about it, the more I thought it was not going to be really um, optimal. I think it was going to be too expensive to run the server. So I went with another approach that I saw on, um, on a Twitter thread, actually, uh, talking about Valheim, where in Valheim, you have the player, the player controls zones of the map, and he is the host for that zone. But then that would introduce a lot of issues in which the player that is hosting those, if he lags, then the other people joining his zone in the map, his radius, will also lag, uh, which was also a frequent complaint that people had with Valheim multiplayer. So I kind of reverted back, and then I was watching some other devlog from other people, and they were mentioning how hard it was to get a server-side collision to work. Um, and that they would really enjoy if they used the Unity solution instead. So I went and I implemented that. I implemented the Unity solution. I had colliders on the server side through Unity and I did not like it. So I went back to create my own collision system, which is very stupid if you ask me. Maybe maybe it's the worst project you could have, but right now I'm parsing collision in between two sphere and that's all. So for example, here I have sphere, box, capsule, collider. I don't have any complex meshes. Uh, not yet and not for quite a while. And by the way, I, I didn't mention that, but these are only for server side collision in the client side. I can have complex collision. I don't mind. I just have to add the mesh collider component on the object and that will work just fine. But here for the server side, so 
everything that is regarding did my spell hit something or am I standing on top of a moving object? Um, those are all server side and I have to take care of that. Um, here, an example, I have this static class called the collision utility and I can set up colliders with their ID. So that's zero, one, two, uh, zero sphere, one is box and capsule is two. I have a reference collider if I am on the client side. So if I want to actually change that client side, as you can see here, those are the unity type. And finally, three float values for the parameter. So, so on top of my actor, I do have a collider ID, but then I have option one, two, and three that I can fill. And it changes depending on what is the initial ID. For example, if I have a zero here, which would stand for sphere, um, I have option one, which is going to be the radius. And then two and three is going to be empty. Like I don't need to put anything in there. Um, yeah, so that's how I deal with that. And then I have a big function called collide, which is a static with a target and also a giver. Those are fetched directly on the object. And as you can see here, depending on which type of collision it is, I don't know if this is efficient, but depending on which type it is uh, here, if it is a sphere collider that is a giver and the receiver is also a sphere, so one of these two, then I do sphere to sphere collision, which is just this. And that's the only one I have right now. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what's going on right now with the collision. Collision is, is something quite hard to mess with with the server. As far as the combat system goes, just like the other the other script, I have of course a combat manager, which is a just an object that contains all the entities that will be ran here at combat state. Um, and then there's a combat manager server and also a combat manager uh, client, and they behave in different ways. And here, basically, this whole code over here is going to allow you to create a player combat or a combat state, or it's going to allow you to create a combat state for a very specific object. So to give you an example, the fire that you saw earlier is a actor that contains the combat flag. So here, so an actor could have a combat flag. And if it does, then I am creating a, um, a combat state for that person, no matter where he is in the map. If he has the combat flag, I am creating a combat actor which would mean then he could be put under the active combat actor eventually. And then every frame that there is active combat actors, I update them and I look for collision check, which is mostly the only thing it's going to be. So I was thinking about my game and how would the combat like communicate? Like how do I deal damage? How do I receive damage? And I was thinking that it's probably going to be all through collision and nothing is going to be like sure target. It's always going to be collision as that's what I'm thinking at the moment, else I'm going to have to find another way to put that in there. But right now it's just a, colli a collision check. And to minimize how much um, computing power I use on my combat state, I have also a combat flag, which here you'll find none, as in it's probably going to be a target dummy. You can hit in it, you can deal damage. It doesn't have uh, meta information, so that is hit point and mana. Does it have additional stats? And here is something really important a get collision and also a give collision. To give you an example, the fire that you saw earlier, the red box that actually deals damage to a pulse, can give collision, so it can deal collision damage to other people, but if I fire something on it, if I throw a spell at it, or if I swing my sword at the fire, I don't want anything to, to affect the fire, so give collision flag is actually off, which would mean that it's not being uh, considered in the logic when I am just looking for that. So. Uh, let's have a look here. Every frame uh, that I want to update the combat, so through a tick, I create a state of people that will receive collision. Actually, no, give collision. Yeah, so those are the fire. I put all the fire inside of here, and then I test it against um, people that can receive those collisions. So only the player right now is the one that can receive uh, collision. And then I call dot pulse, and if there is damage, then I go ahead and I deal damage. Now it's important to note that I'm actually hooked up to my actor manager in here. So register events. When there is a actor being put inside of my fight radius, then um, it actually activates the collision, not the collision, the combat state. So only the actor that are close, so only the combat objects, so only the fire that are around the player, um, one of the player, it could be the, the player on the left side of the map or the right side of the map, all the combat actors near them are the only one that will be put in the active list. 
as we can see over here. So when we add a new actor in the player radius, then only then we put it inside of the active list. And if he is removed from a player radius list, we check is there any other player around that object. And if there is not, we remove him from the, from the list, which would mean that um, like object that are across the map, if there's no player around, they're, they're not fighting together. If there is like a, a boar or a, a pet that walks over the fire on the right side of the map and there is nobody around that, then it's not going to be registered because, well, first, it's probably not even going to move because I'm not going to make them move. If I'm not going to update the logic of a sector of the map that is not being used, um, is what I'm trying to say. And just to help me out understand what's going on, I've created myself a lot of um, debug tools for the sole purpose that it's it's not like MLAPI. MLAPI has some profiling that you can have a look at. It, it you know you can actually tell which objects are active through the inspector, but you don't really have that in the com that you need to transport. It's it's lower level, right? So you have to create pretty much everything on your own. So I went ahead and I created myself a lot of debug menus. Uh, for example, here I'll run a server and a client, boot up the world, and here if I press on F1, on the left side. Oh, by the way, this is only because I'm on the server. Like, for example, if I am to join here with the client, all I see is the, the one on the right side. But since I'm also a server on this screen, then I get to see the one on the left. And as you can see here, when I click on it, it refresh. And in the list, you can find now that there is a new player. If I am to refresh the client side, you'll also see it here. Why? Because it's in my radius. But if I am to go all the way over there, when I'm too far away from people, like for people to spawn, like roughly around here, if I click here, the only actor that I see that is active for this client will be myself. So player zero in this case. Now, if I take this object, the other client, and I just go and I move towards that side too, my camera has some issues, I don't know why, but has some issues I'll find them out later and I just spam on this you can see that first my position is being updated and second as I move away I'm losing all the people around me so now there's only player one and player zero so that's one of the debug tool I have because on this side I always know everything about the server because I am the server those objects are not active however they are on the server if I press on F2 I now see the inventory so who has a active inventory well, myself, a inventory object that is laying around here, and also the other player. I think I can also create more, but my model is broken. Let me check. Yeah, <laughs> I, can't, I can't create more right now, but I have an object here that I can build that actually creates more inventory as well. Um, F3 is a pointer, so it helps me know what I am interacting with. For example, if I move over there and I'm pointing towards the actor, this is a fire clone. Well, that's the name of the game object, but it's a fire basically. And I can see roughly around there is a inventory actor. So those are like the chests I was mentioning about. And here it is. There is also a dialogue actor, which I'm not really using right now, but if I'm interacting with it, eventually there should be dialogue. And the code route is already all made for that. So that's fairly cool. F4, nothing. F5 is my combat manager and it's the last one. And that's the last one I want to show you as well. So here, every client knows how many combat actor there is nearby. Um, for example, let me close this. For example, here there is only two because there is me and the other player. On this side, there is also only two. But as I am to walk over to that side, I'm starting to see that there is a new one. And that's because you don't see it here, but that be that's because there is a... Oh, can I see it if I put my camera beneath? There is a sphere hidden in that little mountain there it is yeah so i'm spawning them through code and i've changed my map since that's why it's kind of weird but as you saw as i'm getting closer to other actors now you can see that i am seeing more actors so there is nine people near me that are being updated and i can take damage from them um, another thing that is worth mentioning is if you look in the back here the active combat actor is up to 10, so 9 here, so 9 around my player, and 1 is for the this other player, which is not near to anything. But as I move away with this player, you'll see that the active combat right there goes down, because as I move away, I'm deactivating active combat actors. So that's another cool thing that goes on. 
and I'm pretty much done showing you what has been worked on. I haven't put as much time as I did, um, my, not last month, but the month prior to that, for the sole purpose that I just have a little bit less time. I wanted to do the, the board games, and I also wanted to learn a lot about uh, how ML API work. And I'm telling you, actually doing ML API helped me out quite a lot with this project. For example, it's really stupid, but like little things like having a net object that is a singleton that tells me if I'm a host or a server actually is very, very useful. And I was able to branch out a couple of places in my code. I have a very, very big amount of code and it gets really complicated really fast. And that's not what I want. I want to go and move away from that. So yeah, uh, doing a MLP actually helped me help quite a lot work on this project, which is of course, much bigger in scale. Now, what I want to do going forward is work on um, client side of things to motivate me to work on this. And actually, when I make videos, I want it to look pretty. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm not really known for doing art, but I'd like this to be pretty and actually look like something that, you know, you're looking forward to see what change visually as well. Uh, so I'm looking forward to do that. Therefore, what I want to do is take a little break from doing the multiplayer stuff. So all the back end, you could say and instead do a little bit of thing regarding the, the single player, not single player, the, the client side. So working on the third person camera controller actually motivated me quite a lot because now I was able to move in a much better fashion and you know, it's over the shoulder, it's quite cool. Uh, what I want to do next is actually work on the tool to create the Terran. Create the Terran, have a place, have a map that I can generate through a texture and yeah, actually, that, that's all. So things like that, also uh, things to fix the flow, put an actual texture on the ground. This is only vertex coloring, so that's not really cool. And, and just move towards making it look better. So every time that I show you something, I can show you uh, something a little bit better. Oh, by the way, one thing that I did, I modeled for the first time recently a looting bag. It looks like this. It's really crap, but hey, I made that. so. Uh, you know, the object that I didn't spawn earlier, the inventory uh, object I didn't spawn is actually that. Now it's a looting bag. Um, I'd like to create more things like that and actually put them in the game. So that's going to be the next step for this. Once I am ready, I'm going to jump back into the multiplayer code and fix things such as over here, I have the combat manager, but I have a combat state, which is actually very, very similar to the inventory state, which means only the thing that will change let's see here, only the dirty part of this object will change and will be pushed over. I'd like to kind of wrap this up in the same type of object that I'm sending over the server as the inventory, because for the inventory, I'm not updating all the slots. If you just play around with slot zero and slot one, I'm just sending you the update for these two, but not the rest. I would like to do the same thing here and put both of these under the same parent object, parent script and those would be children, and I can spawn other states later on and just quickly get things moving. Because as you can see here, uh, it's 200 line of code per, so there's probably something that match that I can merge together. And that actually wraps it up. I know it's not the kind of video I make nowadays, but I want to give you an update on what goes on with Exile. Uh, project is very much alive. I haven't been uploading so much on my personal channel because I, there's nothing visual, really. <laughs> I'd like to show more stuff, but there's nothing visual except the new map that really looks bad. Uh, yeah. All right, so I'll see you guys next week as I launch the chess game made with the same technology I'm using here on this survival game. Um, and then after that, it's going to be a couple of videos, maybe a full month about ML API again, where I am doing cool stuff. Can't wait to, to, to actually show you guys what I'm doing, but it's pretty cool. All right, guys, I'll see you on Discord. Cheers.